Hi everyone, welcome back to Creatively Crafted Life. This is Melanie and today we're going to talk about wood veneer. Um, this is another product that seems to have multiplied in my craft room. I started off originally using one of these embroidery floss cases to um, store my wood veneer and then I ended up using these once these bins, I think these were from the Dollar Tree. And then I had a bunch of loose stuff and I have a bunch in here that are really large and it's all over the place and I want to try and consolidate it I guess is what I'm trying to say. So the solution I've come up with that I hope will work is this. So I bought some three drawer Sterilite containers. They look like this and they have a drawer that pulls out. It does not come out all the way, which is a bit of a bummer. It would be kind of nice if it did. Um, you'll see there's that much space that remains in the, the drawer. Um, so I'm pretty sure all the big pieces will fit in one of these drawers just fine. But I have a lot of little pieces and I don't want it to become a big hodgepodge. So what I have done is I've made some little origami boxes with dividers that I'm going to use to allocate <clears throat> or distribute the um, wood veneer. And then what's nice is this comes out, so if I need to get at the one in the back, I easily can, and then I can just tuck this back in. So I'm gonna show you how I put these boxes together, and then I'm gonna get organizing this, and I will show you the finished results. Okay, so I did a little bit of experimenting. I started off with an eight and a half by eight and a half square and that resulted in a three by three box. I dropped it to seven and a half by seven and a half and that resulted in a <clears throat> two and three quarter um, two and three quarter inch box so 2.75. So then I took a seven by seven and that ended up being the perfect size for those containers which resulted in a two and a half by two and a half inch box approximately. Um, the box, the interior of the box is about five and a half by seven and a half so this gives me enough room for two by three so six boxes. Okay so I'm going to do my best to explain how this box works. It's pretty easy but um, you know, um, I'm not sure how it's going to relay on camera. So I'll do my best. Um, so basically you're going to fold it in half and score. Uh, bone folder is handy. You're going to take it the other way and fold, sorry, you're going to switch it and take it the other way and fold that in half. So we now have something that looks like this. You're going to take all four corners and meet them into the middle. So you just go all the way around the square like so. Now I am using copy paper. Um, Cardstock, I think, would be too hard to get nice crisp lines. I mean, you could try it for sure. Um, but I think by the time this is all folded and then what I'm going to do to stabilize it a little bit, I think it's going to be okay. So once you have your square looking like this with all four triangles pointing in, you're going to take one end and you're going to fold it to the midway mark. So you're just going to use the points. Um, where the triangle points meet as a guideline. You're going to flip it around and you're going to do the same the other way. And I find creasing um, helps a lot using a bone folder. Okay, now you're going to fold this into the middle and you're going to try and make this as even as possible. So I just kind of fold it until they meet in the middle and make sure they look approximately the same and then you're going to want to fold this one or crease this one really well. It's pretty thick so um, it does require a little bit more pressure. Okay, 
Once you have this, we need to open it up. And you'll see that two triangles will be pointing away and two triangles will be pointed in the middle. What we want to do is we want to take these two and push them back into the middle and we want to take these two and unfold them all the way. Okay, so you should now have something that looks like this. Now, I don't know if you can see this, sorry for the light. You see this little square here with the diagonal and this square here with the diagonal? Um, it's going to take a little bit of finesse, but we want to flip this in so that this comes into the center. So what I found helped if it's not folding naturally is just to re, um, repress down the lines so that it's folding the way that you need it to fold. Because some of these creases are going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so now we've got two folds here and this diagonal. And you're just going to push this in, or like pinch it, I guess, is kind of a better way of doing it, okay? So this triangle, we want to crease, we want to fold along this diagonal, right? And we want to pinch it. And you may need to manipulate it, but basically these two lines should form together. So it should look something like that, okay? And you're going to do the same on the other side. So again, I like to just re-fold these to make sure they're going in the right direction. And then this we want to go in and we're going to pinch it along that diagonal and fold it across so that it goes like that. So if we do both of them now that they're trained, it's going to look like that. Okay, does that make sense? And now we're going to take this flap and we're going to fold it over all those layers and just kind of tuck it into the bottom just like that. No glue is needed. So you've got the same on this side. Here's the diagonal, but we want this diagonal to go in, not out like it is. So we're just going to recrease this, push this out in the opposite direction because we want it to go the other way. So now the crease goes in, right? So you feel it or you can take it and pinch it if that helps you. Okay, and do the same on the other side. The lines are already there, we're just changing the direction. So we want to poke this in, grab a hold of it, pinch it in a line like that. Push this against the side so it looks like that. And then push down and into the bottom. Now you don't really need any glue or anything to hold this down, but in order to make this look a little bit neater and a little bit sturdier, I cut a two and a half by two and a half piece of cardstock, and I am just going to push that in and kind of tap it down into the corners, and that's going to give it a lot of stability. Now if you need a box this size for your shapes, you don't need to do the next step. So what I have here is a one by five strip of cardstock. It can coordinate or not coordinate. I'm just using scraps. And I want to score it at one and a quarter and at three and three quarters. So that basically I have one and a quarter here and one and a quarter here. And this here is two and a half, right? So we want this to be the same dimension as our box. So if you were to change your box size, you want this amount here and you basically want to double it for the full length and then split the difference on the ends, okay? So now you're going to take this piece and you're going to fold along the score line one way and fold the other way. So you have a zigzag. You take your box and basically you're going to just tuck that in so that the opposites are um, one goes this way and one goes this way. Now I glued these in because I don't want them to move. If you're happy with it, then don't bother gluing it. <laughs> and that's basically all there's to it. I suppose if you wanted to divide it into quarters, you could do another um, zigzag for each one of these. You would just have to adjust the sizes for it. So that is all I did. I um, mass produced a bunch of these. Oh, a bunch more. 
just sat in front of the TV and produced a bunch. I'm hoping this will be enough. If not, I'll make a few more. But I am going to transfer what I've got in these boxes and loose into some of these containers and get them in the unit. So let me get going. Okay, I have two of the drawer sets and everything is all assembled and everything is all stored in there. So these are just larger items, miscellaneous icons, etc. These are all words. These are um, like Project Life card sizes and then this is also from an album because it's got some holes that you can put in a, in a junk journal or something. And then I've got the little drawers with all my other icons separated and everything is in one set of containers. I'm so thrilled with that and I hope this will work better than what I had before. Let me know below how you store your wood veneer. Is it something that you have a lot of or just a little and what seems to work best for you? Anyways, thank you so much for joining me and until next time, happy crafting and happy organizing.